Good evening and welcome to another video in the Artful Coder series. Tonight I'm going to talk about SSRS. What is it? Well, it's SQL Server Reporting Services. It's a way of designing reports within Visual Studio and hosting them on your server. So this allows lots of different types you can use. And of course, there is other reporting solutions out there like ClickView, Power BI is gaining quite a bit of traction and maybe in future videos we'll cover that. Now, you would think that you'd just be able to go to, let's load Visual Studio up, and we'll just open a sample solution, or we'll try and create a new one. But basically, to do a, a, a SQL Server Reporting Services project, you do need to download this reporting services projects 2022 otherwise you won't be able to create a sql server reporting studio project in visual studio and you can see here that it's reports a project so all you got to do is go to google type ssrs visual studio 2022 and then the first thing that comes up is this one here I've already got this installed, but you do get started, then it will trust that. And it downloads that. And then what you're going to want to do is install that. I've already done this in the essence of time this video. And what I'm going to show you is how to set up a brand new. So what we're going to do is go to SSMS. So you want SQL Server Magic Studio. And I'll just talk through bits and how you set certain bits up. There you go. So that's downloaded, it's a VSIX, which is installs the Visual Studio. I've already got it installed, so I won't do it again. Uh, but we'll just wait for Visual Studio to load up. And what we'll show you, we'll go in. We have databases, sample data. And this, I've just pulled a data set offline. I've not done anything clever. I've just gone to uh, CSV data sets. And there is loads of them from governmental data. And when you're trying to load one, so let's let's do this quickly. So let's go and find let's, let's download that. So you download the uh, quarter data. So we go downloads. And we just unzip, we just find that and unzip that. Or double click it, open it up. Copy that out, say to documents. I should have done it. So it didn't like that, did it? Copy documents. I did it, okay, so let's get this file. And then all you're gonna to wanna to do is choose your database, do right click on the database, tasks, import flat file. So this is a wizard that allows you to bring data in. So you choose the file. Let's just go with that one. It's a simple CSV, nothing. No, is that the right one? Let me just check if that right. Okay, let's just have a look. Oh, documents, apologies. So that's our CSV, very simple, three and a half meg. You give it a new table, so just call it that. Click next. So what it's going to do here is it's just going to load some data in. Not a lot to it. It's just going to show us what we've got there. Do next. And it allows you to detect your column type. So this is where you can set up if it's date values and all of that. But what we'll do is we'll change that to... A, um, We'll leave it as it is and see how we go on. Just click next. And it may fail. Yes. So what it tells you. Data value. So. What you do is keep going back. Data value. Can't do that. So let's give it a float. Again. Just through the area. Okay. So back. Again, you'll want to probably choose if it's date, that's data value as opposed to date value. And you've just got to keep working through these errors. There you go. So now what we've got is we should now have a new table in our database. 
which is that one there. And if we just select all the rows, there's nothing too impressive there. We've just got that, that, and that. So the next thing we need to do, yes, you want to probably translate this to a year, you can uh, to a date, you can play about with that. And we've got a data set. So what we're going to do is if we just bring this over here, get, hang on, it's doing something really strange. There you go. So if we go out to Visual Studio, let's work with our sam. Let's do. Let's do. Let's work with our sample application because it already has lots of example reports in it. I'll talk you through a few bits. So what we set up is you want your database connection, which uses a login to SQL Server, and what I would advise when you're doing this is to restrict the security right down. Now, what do I mean by that is create an account. We've got sample data. But what I'll show you is server, it's got a password. It's SQL user. User mapping, I've just simply given it read data because it doesn't need anything else. Don't give it database owner because it doesn't need that functionality for it. So if we just go up and run this report, It's going to load the data. There you go. So this is a simple pivot or matrix where we're grouping data by how many sales we've had for each publisher, each games company, by the title. And there's lots of stuff you can do. This is just a sample throw together. So a data source is like your connection from your report to back to the server where the data is hosted. In this case, we just want to do a flat table of some information just to show you what we do. So we need to create a new data set. Let's do our new data set. We choose the data set name. So let's shorten this. Let's just call it machine, biz uh, machine business data or something. We've just got machine. Call it uh, machine. And always try and name them something good. So then if we go down here, let's just copy that and put that. And we're going to take that out. And if you refresh fields now, you can overwrite these to whatever names you want. So click OK. So we now have our data set within our report. And it's... It needs that connection live because it won't allow you to use the data set properly. You'll just get errors and it won't allow you to do it properly. So the next thing we want to do is we want to create a shared data set. Now, the reason you do this is because it's localized to a set of or to a report. So the first thing actually we need to do is else first. So let's do what you need to do is if you do add new report, it's going to take you through the wizard. Then it defines you don't want to do that. We're going to create a brand new report. So click add new item report. I uh, will just in the essence call this machine data. Click add. And what you will see here is a blank report. If we just preview this, we'll either get an error. Nothing, because there's nothing on it. So then what we need to do is you notice that on our other report, we've got a data set that it can use, but on this one we don't. But these data sets are shared across the project. So just be careful not to use the same names or anything like that, because it will get confused. So right click on data sets in report, add data set. You got to use a shared data set. And we'll just call it the same name. This can be the same name. Click OK, refresh fields. And we should see the fields coming through now. So you can see that that's our fields. And what we're going to do is right click on our report. So you can do all sorts of stuff like you can do insert a page header. And in here we'll just do text box and call this machine business data uh, put that up there I'll just bring that there and then in the main report area 
Now you can add a matrix, so matrix is a way of grouping data, like this is what we've done in this one over here. We've used a matrix, so we'll just do a flat table. So you need to select the report, click into it, and it should bring up, right click, where is it, select, tablex one, Okay, so we've not got our Solution Explorer there. So how do we do that? Okay, so let's see if it's good. It's, good. it's already there because it's the only data set it's there. So it's linked that data set in. So if we look back at our data, let's just choose Series Reference and Subject. So we're going to do that. We want Series Reference. And it will automatically populate certain bits in here. And yes, you could say that certain bits are put in. You could say status out. You know, all sorts of stuff. Because you can do so much with all of your cells and how they're all formatted. That will probably be covered in another video. But if we just preview that data now. There you go. So we have a simple report that is an SSRS report. And you could simply deploy this if we had a SQL Server uh, reporting services set up. It'll probably try and deploy it somewhere that doesn't exist. The next phase is to set that report server up and get our report on the server. And again, that is a very simple report. That's pretty much the way to do it. And I've done lots of SSRS reporting. This one here was for a uh, workspace project that I want to play about with something. But again, you can see all of that data across there. And this is just another sample data set that I've taken offline. So don't feel that if you struggle with the data, just go on Google, look for a CSV and have a play about it. A lot of them are free, probably some not very relevant, but a lot of the Gov data, this is New Zealand because NZ, will have data sets you can play about with. It just gives a way to play about with your data to design reports. For example, here, if we just select that, I'll just show you, you can do effects, properties, font, you can have a different kind of font for that if you want to. And there's all sorts of things you can do with the cell. You come up here. It's not that one. It's, uh, where is it? Not cell properties. Somewhere. Anyway, you can color all of your cells in. You can do nested groups and that sort of thing as well. So, thank you so much for watching this video. This is just an introduction into um sql server reporting services in the next video we'll set the report server up which requires a sql server instance to be up and running so yeah i'm glad you've enjoyed the video and uh thank you so much for watching